In today's Health Watch, Local 3's Caitlin Corbett tells us how one woman got her life back on track after multiple episodes of Bell's Palsy. Imagine having trouble drinking through a straw or applying chapstick. That's a reality for people who experience facial palsy. This Awareness Week, we share the remarkable story of one Bell's Palsy patient and how Aurora Bay Care Medical Center helped her treat and manage that condition. Maybe I'll be moving on, and I think it should be something I You might remember facial palsy coming into the spotlight when singer Justin Bieber had to cancel several concerts after a battle with Ramsey Hunt syndrome, a diagnosis that can sometimes cause facial paralysis. But facial palsy is much more common than you think, and the signs can be hard to recognize. I thought it was just like pink eye happening, my eye was acting funny, and then when I woke up the next morning it was starting to go to my mouth, so we were worried maybe it could have been a mini stroke or something, and when we went into the doctor they told me it was Bell's palsy. Kelly Hafner was 18 years old and in nursing school when she had her first encounter with Bell's palsy, the most common condition resulting in facial palsy. It was just kind of scary and you're yeah. like, how long will it last? Mm -hmm. I, you're at that age where you're starting college. I was just in my yeah. starting my nursing school and it was it was a little overwhelming yeah. to know will my face work or won't it? There's nothing you can really do to control it. Sudden weakness on one side of the face is a telltale sign. Things like brushing your teeth become difficult. And in a rare case, Hafner's journey with Bell's palsy wasn't over. Three more episodes, the final time, Hafner noticed migraines, muscle spasms, and nerve pain. Just kind of at my wit's end with just like, there's nothing more that you're going to be able to do. I'm already past the time frame that people say that you can get better. Uh, unfortunately, you read a lot of what's online and it's not very encouraging. But Hapner soon learned there was more she could do when she was referred to Aurora Bay Care for speech therapy with Dr. Karen Floriano Heimerl. Um, when someone first has Bell's palsy, the education is really important and there are some things that you can do, um, but there are also things we don't want you to do that can impact your recovery. So coming in and just, even if it's just that one time meeting and we never have to meet again, it's really important to have that education. Dr. Floriano Heimerl is no regular speech language pathologist. She's the area's only one trained in facial neuromuscular retraining. We have to first look at muscle tightness and trying to reduce that. And then we look at retraining where we work on really forming new pathways in the brain that when I smile, these are the muscles that move. These are the muscles that are supposed to stay quiet. Havener has made tremendous progress. And while she wishes she knew about this kind of therapy sooner, now she's spreading the word. Really just advocating for yourself and passing the message along. I've shared Karen and speech therapy with so many people going forward. And really everybody I talk to is like, why would you do speech therapy for that? And then I explain and they're like, oh my word, we had no idea. Really the speech therapy was amazing and Karen was amazing. To learn more about speech language therapy, visit Aurora Bay Care's website. And that's your Health Watch for Local 3 News. I'm Caitlin Corbett.